Hi there and welcome to this quick start video on the project window. The project window is the most important window inside of Cubase. We can record MIDI, audio, VST instruments. We can access samples and integrate them into our project. We can also manipulate sound. We can edit sound and MIDI and we can put all of these musical ideas together into the one project, all using the project window. Let's go and take a look around. The project window is split into customizable and scalable zones. So basically, you decide how your project's going to look. I would always recommend going with the default to start with. Now along the top, we have the toolbar strip. And the toolbar strip does exactly what it says. It contains the tools that we require to compose and record music. Down the bottom, we've got the transport bar. Now what does transport do? It gets you from one place to another place. So you can see the all important controls down the bottom for record, play, stop, cycle, and you can even see where you are in the project. Once again, completely configurable. Over on the right hand side of the project window, we've got the right zone. The two tabs at the top of the right zone show us the media bay and VST instruments. The media bay is a library of things like samples, presets, MIDI files and MIDI patterns and so much more. The VST instruments allow us to add instruments or software based instruments into our project. Over in the left zone, we've got the track inspector. Now this contains a lot of useful information and pretty much an overview of whatever track we have selected in the project window. You control which zones you want to see using the show and hide menu in the top right hand corner. I'm turning the left zone on and off. Now the right zone. The button in the middle will show the all new lower zone. This can be split into four tabs, the mix console, editor, sampler control and chord pads. Zones are implemented to ensure that you've got access to important functionality as fast as possible. Moving to the right and we've got the setup window layout. We can further define what we see on the project window by showing or hiding the status, info or overview line and also you can turn on and off the transport bar down the bottom. Moving further to the right, we've got one of the many gear wheels inside of Cubase. Clicking on the gear wheel will bring up a drop down menu. We can quickly tick or untick different tools to see them or we can go into the setup window for a more detailed overview. Inside of the setup window, we can also add and remove tools, but we can also change their positioning in between the left and the right divider, just simply by dragging them around. Moving tools up and down will also change their positioning inside of the toolbar. And of course, as with everything inside of Cubase, you can save your settings as a preset, so you can recall them at any point in time. As well as being able to turn zones on and off, you can also scale the zones. So if you're working on something in particular and you need to have a larger or wider view, just pick up on the line, drag it up, down or left and right. I can also scale the whole project window. And you'll notice that as I do this, those top three show and hide layout tool buttons are always visible. At the top of the work area in the project window, we have the timeline. Now, Time is an important thing when it comes to recording music. So we can change in between bars, beats and seconds. We can quickly move throughout our project by clicking on different points in the timeline. We can also zoom in and out by holding down with the mouse on the timeline and dragging up and down. And you can also zoom in and out using the G and H buttons as a shortcut on your computer keypad. Along the top, we've got the menu bar. And of course, you'll notice generic commands like new, open, save, save as, copy, paste. But anything with three dots next to the command will open another menu. For instance, I'm going project, project setup. Project setup gives me an overview of all of the important information in my project, including the sample rate and the bit resolution. Let's go back to the project menu. You can see at the top, there's add track. So we can add a track there, or we can simply click on the plus button for a new track. I'm adding an audio track. I can browse for presets. I can enter the number of tracks. I can choose between stereo, mono. I can name the track, specify the output, and then click the add track button. We can use the zoom tool in the bottom right hand corner of the work area to change the size of these tracks. There's also presets, which is really handy if you want to have a really close look at something quickly in the middle of a project. 
As we click on a track, the Track Inspector will show us the relevant information for that track. Wherever you see a track inside of Cubase, you'll see an E button. Clicking on this E button brings up the all important channel overview window, which gives us a really nice overview of what's going on in the track. We can change things like EQ, channel strips. We can even configure the window to show us exactly what we need to see at any point in time. Some people like working with color. So you can select a track and then go over to the track name in the inspector, click on that little triangle and change the color. You can also change the color using the color tool in the toolbar. Back in the work area, at the top of the timeline, we've got a left and right locator. Now, these are important for a number of different things, which we'll cover as we go along. We can use the snap tool to snap whatever we're working on in the project window to a specific time event. As I change from bar to beats, you'll notice my right locator will only lock onto the beats. This is really important for editing and we'll cover that later in the video series. I'm turning on cycle mode and now the project will cycle in between the left and the right locator. In the next video, we're going to have a look at a complete system setup and make sure we've got everything that we need to start recording. Then it's time to get our hands dirty. I'll catch you then.